Well, whenever new job numbers come out, you hope for the best for those out of work. But this week, they are not good, not good at all. Employers adding only 88,000 jobs last month, and that's the fewest in nine months, well below the six month average. We actually need to add at least 125,000 jobs a month just to keep up with population growth. And on top of that, the unemployment rate fell to 7.6%. At first glance, that may seem like good news, but it only fell because more folks stopped looking for work. It's discouraging. Ed Butowski, managing partner of Chapwood Investments, joining me now. Ed, how bad is it? It's bad, Jamie. I mean, and I think we need to put this in some sort of relevant context. The reason it's important that everyone follows this and not just be a spectator is because the jobs market is really a key indicator of the strength of the economy. The economy is strong, we're going to have more business, we're going to have more economic activity, and as a result of that, Jamie, we will have more money going into the government in the form of tax revenue. If we don't have that, we're forced to print money to pay for our entitlements and all the other expenditures the government has. So this is important to everyone, not just in the United States, but around the world. So this week was bad, but where is it going? Well, I'd like to, I, you know, that's a great question. You know, you said, you gave a statistic there that is spot on. Just 125,000 jobs is needed to keep pace with, um, you know, from, a, from the number of people entering the workforce or the birth rate in terms of uh, how many jobs we need. But we really need 300,000 jobs a month for at least a year to get us healthy. So if you look at 88,000, that's really, if this was a, a score in, in, in class or in, at some university, that test would get a 29. We failed miserably. And, you know, what are we going to need to do to turn it around? A lot of things. And the reason people aren't hiring, the number one reason the surveys say is because of Obamacare and lack of clarity on the business, uh, you know, front. You know, that 29 grade in red at the top of yeah. the paper, you got to bring home to your parents and you have some explaining to do. The president doesn't yeah. have a, a reelection coming up now. He's, he's set to go. Yeah. So he's got some time to turn it around. What does that take? Well, what it takes is a, a very pro-business environment, um, and it really takes for somebody in the administration to hit the control Alt delete command and change the way they're going about it. Because if we keep doing this, we will not change it. The president will continue to get the 29s on his scorecard, maybe even lower, because there's no good reason for anyone to hire at this point because they don't have a good, clear understanding of the future. Obamacare is very expensive. All the regulations are very expensive. And we say this over and over again, mm -hmm. but it's actually starting to happen. We see it's not working. And what really upsets me the most is that we see it, but we're not willing to go out and change. It. And that's what's really concerning, and all Americans should be very concerned that the president's not willing to change his posture on any of his positions. You know, on the one hand, you want to see it change, if that's possible. Yeah, we do. On the other hand, I want to ask you, because you're right, more jobs, more tax revenue, so the people who are already working maybe won't have to experience as many tax hikes as I was trying to discuss with the panel. It's one after another, potentially. Mm -hmm. What other indicators are impacted by jobs numbers? Well, really everything. I mean, jobs is a key indicator, and it really gives you an understanding of the gross domestic product uh, number that's going to come out as well. Uh, everything really plays off of that. I always say that the jobs number is really the springboard for economic activity, because if you have a good jobs market, everything gets better, and then we're going to be able to build roads because we'll have more tax revenue. We'll be able to, you know, not necessarily have to go out and print money and devalue our currency. That's another reason everyone needs to think about this, because if we don't have the money, and we're one and a half trillion dollars short every year right now, between a trillion just on how much we spend and then the interest on our debt. So we have to come up with a one and a half trillion more dollars. And what we're doing now is printing money, devaluing our currency. If we get the economy going, we get more tax revenue into the government, we're not going to have to do that. Well, you got our attention, Ed. Ed Butowski, <laughs> always good to have you. your opinion on these things. This is a biggie. Take yeah, care. Thanks, Jamie.